first ever comprehensive exhibition to celebrate the work and life of the pioneering British photographer Olive Edis has opened here at the Norwich Castle Museum. She was one of the most important photographers of the first half of the 20th century, the first ever accredited female British war photographer, and her studios were in the delightful seaside resort of Sheringham. Olive was born in 1876. Her father Arthur was a successful London gynaecologist, and with her mother Mary and twin sisters Catherine and Emmeline, she grew up in Marylebone, central London, where her father had his medical practice. Olive came from a family of pioneering women, counting Elizabeth Garrett Anderson, the first woman to qualify as a doctor, amongst her relatives. In 1900, she was given her first camera by her cousin Caroline Murray, who became the subject of her first portrait, which Olive donated to the National Portrait Gallery in 1948 with a handwritten inscription, my very first attempt at a portrait, which turned my fate in 1900. Following the death of their father, Olive and her sisters, along with their mother Mary, moved to Sheringham, the popular holiday resort where their great uncle John had moved some years earlier. Here, Olive opened up a studio designed by her uncle Sir Robert Edis, a renowned architect. She expanded her business, opening a London studio in Notting Hill and dividing her time between the capital and the North Norfolk coast. And she regularly drove between the two in her favourite car, an Austin 7. This exhibition, entitled Fishermen's and Kings, aptly surmises the breadth of Olive's subjects, from the young Prince Albert, later King George VI, to the etched faces of the local North Norfolk working fishermen and their families. Cromer Museum holds the world's largest collection of Olive's work, including prints, autochromes, glass plate negatives and cameras, and its curator, Alastair Murphy, has helped to create this exhibition. It's an extraordinary exhibition. Olive's range of sitters were kings and queens and playwrights and authors. Why do you think she was able to get so many famous people to sit for her? Well, I think it started because her extended family had a number of notable people in it, including Elizabeth Garrett Anderson, who was the first qualified female doctor. And I assume she went on to other people as her reputation spread. I mean, she photographed four different prime ministers, future kings, people like George Bernard Shaw, Ernest Shackleton. What do you think was so special about Olive that really made her photo photographs so different to other photographers of that time? Well, she obviously was a good technical photographer, but I think what this collection shows and the way that she interacts with anybody, whether it's a king or a fisherman, is that Olive had an ability to put her sitters at ease, that she was able to empathise with them. This is Walter Catty Allen, and it is one of my favourite photographs. She often said that the face was the X-ray of the soul, and I feel in this photograph that you look right into uh, Walter's eyes and you get a sense of what he was really like. I imagine after many months of preparation, it is an absolute delight to have the exhibition here at the Castle Museum. It is great, um, but I always say to people that Olive is so special that you would have to mess up really badly not to end up with a wonderful exhibition. Our county of Norfolk has given rise to many notable figures throughout the centuries, and with this exhibition, Olive Edis can rightly take her place alongside these as a photographer of both national and international importance, of whom we can be rightly proud.